on that previous episode of Stico. What do you think about the Jews? Hey, go back to synagogue. Stop trying to fucking be a YouTuber, bro. They they practice basically like black magic. Do you get into like Jews practice black magic in Minecraft? You're being brainwashed, yo. Make up. Wake up. Uh oh. What the hell is going on? Hey Sana, it's me, Pinely, and welcome to Theory Busters. In the past, I've used this series as a platform to talk about the dangers of conspiracy theories, of how nowadays they're often used as a tool for radicalization. Going down this rabbit hole, going down this path, can lead you into a life of isolation, of hatred, of lies. And if you're a famous person on the internet with a bit of a following, you very much might be taking hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people down this path with you. And let me tell you, uh, there has never been a man who's dedicated as much of his life to proving me right as a Sneeko. What do you think about the Jews? Here's the thing, I'm Jewish. And I I've been seeing a bunch of things around the world right now that I'm, I'm not too happy about. <laughs> Uh, Kanye. Part of the reason as to why Sneeko is pretty dangerous is just the fact that his fans find him to be really, really inspiring. It seems like nowadays, if you're just a guy who screams a lot on the internet, people are going to find you motivational for some reason. I'm a man. I'm gonna be happy. I want everything the world can provide for me. What, what is this? What, who, who actually feels something after seeing this? Now, on October 3rd, 2022, Sneeko got banned off of YouTube, his main streaming platform. This was essentially the September 2001, for people who don't believe in September 2001. And you may be asking right now, hey, Pinely, he's gone. W why are you talking about this guy? Who even cares? I do. Well, Sneeko is the subject of this video. Yeah, he's, he's in the title of this thing. I want to use him as more of a case study. A case study for a trend that's way larger than himself. An issue that is becoming worse and worse by the day. Sneeko's path down this theory radicalization rabbit hole is not really unique. But in his case, being a streamer and all that, it's been documented really, really well. So I want to delve into this rabbit hole. I want to go with Sneeko and see what happened here in every step of the way. How did a kid who grew up making videos for fun end up becoming this guy? Wake up! Wake up! Come back to reality! Get off Instagram! You're so stupid! Wow, Jesus Christ. By the way, according to my stats, there's only one person watching this video who is not subscribed. So if you are this one person, please change that now or I will I will cry. And before things get a little bit too serious, I should point out that this video is in fact sponsored by Native. I got these three scents. I've been using them for a few days now. I just, I really like smelling them. This one is the coconut vanilla one. Ah, this is what I, I use the most. It smells like a pina colada. Lavender or rose one. Bit of a bit of an earthy smell to this one. Bit of an earthy. And the peach one. Ooh, reminds me of the summer. Native's deodorants are vegan and cruelty free. They're also aluminum free and paraben free. And it has familiar and simple ingredients such as coconut oil and shea butter. It stays on you for 72 hours. And why not enjoy this lovely autumn with their fall collection? Ah, warm cider and cinnamon, toasted marshmallow and vanilla, cashmere and rain. Oh, we're gonna smell lovely this fall. If you go to their website, you can get three deodorants for $39. But if you use code Pinely, that is my name. You can take that down to $26. That's 33% off. This code is so good, you can also get 20% off any body wash or toothpaste. Big thanks to Native for sponsoring this video, they help a lot. Please check them out so you can support my channel, and let's continue with the video. During the pandemic, I think one fact has become pretty clear. There is a definite connection between religion, believing in conspiracies, and politics. And Sneeko is definitely no exception to that rule. Why is anyone even close to siding with Satan? Why is- I'll say from my experience at least, every single person that I've talked about in this Theory Buster series has had somewhat of a religious past or is currently religious. Shane Dawson and his brother both said that they grew up religious. Big Nick. Yeah, I mean... Pfft. What you're seeing in Ukraine and Russia, Jesus said in the last days there's gonna be wars, but the globalists and the Illuminati are doing... Nico mentions a lot how he grew up as a Christian, then became an atheist, and then when he grew up, well, now, he felt a bit lost and decided to look at faith as a way to kind of combat that. I don't want to be an atheist nerd anymore. That's when I feel I, I had no purpose, had no direction in life. 
And this has given yep. me more purpose and more, it's, uh, I feel more alive. Back when Sneaker was like 14, the dude was already making some crazy ass videos about nine. I'm going to say a few words so I don't get demonetized, 11. And now he's at this point where he's closer than ever to the beliefs of his past, while also believing in all this theory bull crap. Satan. The guy simply cannot stop talking about Satanists. It's, it's all he ever talks about all the time. Satan. Satanist this. Satanist that. You'd think that a Satanist slept with his wife considering how much he talks about them. And according to the Sneeko mindset, every single person who's rich and powerful, but not the rich and powerful people that he likes, is a Satanist. He claimed that Gaga's Super Bowl halftime show was a cover for Satanic Rite. Yup. Lady Gaga, more like Lady Satan. Go away, you scumbag. Yup. Jim Carrey. Satanist. That's some demon shit. Lil Nas X, Satanist. Obama, Satanist. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel, Satanist. Ah, get exposed. <laughs> demon. There's a bit of a cycle going on here. Well, not a cycle, but I guess, I guess a bit of a weird line. QAnon theories are really widespread at the moment. Even if you're not like a close follower of this stuff, it's everywhere in recent years. Lots of people believe in that stuff. And these theories, these Q drops, intentionally tie themselves to heavily religious imagery. Satan, demon, demon, demonic rituals. Not only that, but what they do is that they take already existing theories that a lot of people believe in and intentionally put religious elements into them. For example, you could take the classic, the classic reptilians in government theory and, you know, add a little bit of tweaks to that, turn it into uh, little devil people in the government. That way you can get both the classic tinfoil hat wearing people and the evangelical Christians on your side. It's a win-win. To get to this level in show business, you need to do some weird ass demonic rituals. They've been doing it since the ancient Rome, since ancient Greece. At the same time that they've been controlling people and manipulating and doing crazy powerful rituals, you know what happened the same day that they dropped the monkey box, which was this idea of a religious war of the good guys versus the Satanists. That stuff is really, really rooted into evangelical Christian rhetoric. And whether you're a big Christian boy right now or someone like Sneeko, who was in the past, that stuff is still deeply rooted in your head. So I've been talking a lot about the spiritual warfare and I've, sure. I'm trying to wake people up to how they're trying to feminize men and masculinize women. And it's an intentional thing from the top. That's why everybody has their gender pronouns. They're making up new genders every single day. It's pretty obvious that Sneeko firmly believes that this is a battle that he's fighting. Every single day, Sneeko's putting his goddamn life on the line. But by going on stream for six hours and being shirtless, yep. there's a frequent rhetorical question that Q often uses, which is, do you believe in coincidences? Personally, I do, because I'm a grown-up living in an adult world. But these guys, Sneeko and his friends, for them, that's never the case. Everything has to be connected to everything all the time. It's just it's just a coincidence. Sneeko talks a lot about how we're in the Matrix and how he's going to be the one that's going to take us out of it. Essentially, <laughs> stealing the shit that Andrew Tate always says. Y'all still don't believe in that this Matrix shit is real? I get called Morpheus all the time in my DMs because I'm trying to wake people up. If this is something we're going to go into a bit more in a sec, but yeah, I mean, if you literally believe that the world is run by a bunch of, a bunch of programmed little things... <laughs> Yeah, and obviously, you're also going to think that nothing is a coincidence. It's just it's just a coincidence. It's just a coincidence. Right in front of our f face, man. The basis to the fear in these theories, these Q-type theories that uh, Sneeko pedals around all the time, is that behind all the big bad things in the world, there's some, some group responsible for that. There's an evil, mysterious cabal of people twisting everything around, controlling everything behind the scenes. And you know, while you gotta be a bit of a fool to not think that the most rich and powerful people in the world do have some sort of power in the world, Nico also believes that these rich and powerful people need to like eat babies and stuff. Chat, from what I heard, eh, apparently Jim Carrey was a demon too. He was part of these and celebrity nonsense satanic rituals where they go to islands and do weird rituals so that they all can expose- From what I've heard, what- Who's- who's delivering that type of information to you? But This shows me that he made it out. Oh, okay, okay, well- <laughs> Well, thank you for clearing that one up, Sneak. I was very- I was very confused. You'd go to any kind of theory convention and, you know, it, it would be a bit of a mystery to try to crack down who do these people think that this cabal really is. How do you stand on Hitler? Do you- 
you believe in if you research Hitler at all? Who are they referring to? What what is this group of people who, according to them, love money so much? The Jews are in. F in, yeah, they freaking control all the of every it's a bit of a mystery But hopefully by the end of this video I can manage to figure that one out if you're wondering how quickly all this stuff is tied to anti-semitism A lot of these theorists believe that the family that's running this cabal is the Rothschilds a Historically wealthy Jewish family and it's really fascinating how while there are many insanely wealthy families who aren't Jewish It's specifically the Jewish ones that are labeled as cunning evil and well organized freaking control all the of every do they control all the money in the world platforming these q type theories is both beneficial and not so much on one hand by being this this grifter this this parasite sucking on people's brains you manage to capture a very devoted audience because as much as these people claim to be free thinkers they really love following people these are lost souls i had no purpose had no direction in life. But the main downside is that you're probably gonna get banned. But hey, I mean, at least he made some money along the way. Nico is clearly a confident, charismatic guy. It's no wonder that people end up following him. And he says everything with so much conviction because he himself believes everything that's coming out of his mouth. He himself is part of these people. You know, a lot of times you may go on Twitch, you may watch one of the streamers that you like. By the way, I'm gonna be a streamer now. It's finally on Twitch. Anyways, you may be going to see one of your favorite streamers it might be me now pinely on twitch maybe seeing pinely on twitch and you, and you think oh pinely on twitch oh wow he's a pretty reasonable guy finally on twitch wow he's a very <laughs> finally on twitch wow he's, he's a pretty reasonable guy you know i like the the takes that he has to say um he's doing a pretty good job at entertaining me but then you make a mistake your eyes move a little bit. They move from looking at the streamer that makes a lot of sense and is a genius and his name is Pinely on Twitch and you decide to look at the Twitch chat. It's only been a second but it's already too late. You have witnessed the downfall of humanity. You look at the Twitch chat and you realize that everyone in the world is is a bit dumb. Nico is one of the few examples that I've seen where the the streamer is exactly on the same level as his chat. His insane, unmoderated, insane, tinfoil hat wearing chat. Let's read some of these things that th these people are saying. The elite <laughs> slash matrix are running the world and the presidents and popes or the puppets. A triangle is everywhere. Dude donated fifty dollars just to just to say this shit. This one was posted while uh, Sneeko was watching a Lady Gaga concert. I rebuke thee, Satan, in the name of Christ. Woo! And uh, oh, oh, I, I I don't I don't really know about this one. The world. It's a scary place. Lots of bad things are happening all the time. It's hard to feel helpless against all those bad things. Conspiratorial beliefs sort of work as a way to explain that that badness. They create a situation where there's a clear good and a clear evil. On one hand, you have the evil child sacrificing Satanist. And on the other hand, you know, you got you got the good the good people, the the ones that love God and Christ and all that. A lot of faith surround this idea that individuals can gain power within themselves without the support of any major institutions, the same ones that Sneeko and Alex Jones claim to be attacking them. They've been doing it since the ancient Rome. By simply believing, by simply, I guess, realizing that this is a thing that's happening, you are creating that power within yourself. And Sneeko, well, it seems pretty clear that he sees it as his mission to wake other people up to that reality as well. In The Matrix, the very, the very popular movie the matrix that's that's a movie franchise there's a very iconic scene neo is presented with an option at some point he's offered to either take the blue pill and stay in normal mundane reality this this fake reality as we learn later on in the movie or he can take the red pill and then a bunch of cool shit happens that pill being the one that takes him out of the matrix now for the the first time i watched this scene i was like this is a good scene this is this is very interesting stuff you know it's clearly sort of like an analogy about enlightenment and sort of the dangers that you take along with it. I've also seen that this is an analogy to the trans experience, which would make sense considering the makers of The Matrix. Very cool scene, very good stuff. In recent years though, it has turned into shit. The meaning of this scene has been twisted and, and muddled with and squashed and 
thrown around like a ball that now when you say the word red pill it doesn't have anything to do with, with the actual matrix movie i feel like nowadays it just means it just means becoming an idiot that's that's all it is wake up Neo, I'm presenting you with two options. I don't know if that's what he says at the beginning of this scene. You can either take the blue pill and stay in this shit-ass, mundane, shit-ass reality, or you can take the red pill and become a moron. The idea of the red pill and the way that Sneeko contextualizes it fascinates me. It's this vague thing, this this term for realization that he just attaches to everything. Nico uses a lot of the same rhetoric that Andrew Tate uses. This this messiah type speech about how he's going to be the one to break you out of the matrix. That's what I want to do with the stream. I want to awaken people, not woke, become awake. Both Sneeko and Tate are here to claim to you that they are the truth. They are the ones to bring you salvation. Both of them make sure to create some sort of reliance between the viewer and them. You need them. They are the red pill in a way. And both of them also sell you a bunch of courses to help you do that because they also like they like being rich the difference between tate and sneeko is i i actually think that sneeko believes the things that he says he believes that he is the truth and he believes that the things that he says are right well andrew tate i think he knows that he's bullshitting i mean he he's just like a straight up villain i've said this in the video that i made about him but in past business ventures uh tate has actually said well his brother has said that they have hired teams of researchers that learn how to manipulate men and then you know use that to gain money off of them essentially a scam business sort of allegedly i don't know if i, that, I don't know if he's gonna sue me <laughs> so it's really fascinating andrew tate you know does what he does as a bit of a scam making money Nico also likes making money, but he actually believes all the stuff that Andrew Tate says. Andrew Tate and Tristan Tate are exactly the men that they say they are. So he just does what he does, but he has his entire heart into it. This incredible idea of taking one pill and thus changing your life forever seems fantastic, especially in a movie. But when we're talking about real life, I feel like this is such a shallow way of looking at things. Like what, you're just taking one thing, you have one moment, and everything changes forever? I mean, I get it if you actually went through an experience that caused that, like an actual life or death scenario that changed your view on everything, that makes sense. But I don't really feel like that's the case with Sneeko. I feel like he just, he just says that he's enlightened. He has just created this scenario in his head and to his fans that the world is divided to two parts, you know, truth and not truth. And that he's the one that could come over and turn that switch on for you. Become awake. I just feel like real enlightenment is one of those things that should take a lot of time to reach. It's a point that you reach through actual experiences in life. You can't just take a red pill and decide that this is it. Everything is different. Everything will never be the same. You gotta have some goal to genuinely believe that you have been enlightened, that, that you've broken out of the matrix just because you, what? hate women well, you shut up and clean and stay home and don't do anything just be an object in the crib because you think that jews are bad wow you really you really broke out of the system with those 1950s type of ideas i've watched a lot of sneeko's past streams for this video and it, it's it's at times really difficult to tell what taking the red bull actually means for this guy just because most of what he says doesn't actually make any sense. What is the Matrix exactly according to this guy? Get the fuck out of the mall, bro. You are just an NPC walking around and just wearing normie clothes. You just look stupid. Like anyone in a mall genuinely. Let's go hang out in the mall. Is going to the mall the Matrix? Is the mall, is the mall itself the Matrix? <laughs> what if I want to buy things, a bunch of clothes, and also try them on? I, I, the mall, that's the reason for it. <laughs> Who are you to talk about basic ass clothes? Look at you. <laughs> you are a guy with a shaved head who is either constantly shirtless or has a white shirt on. That's, that's literally, that's, that's the character creation screen starting point. You are literally going around as the most basic form of like a dude. Does being in the matrix mean, I don't know, uh, wanting a deeper fulfillment in life? Like some you, sort you of like deeper many, fulfillment? I don't think so. Deeper don't fulfillment so. is some matrix shit, bro. Women don't provide that much. What is this guy talking about? Deeper fulfillment means being in the matrix? What are you, what, what, what do you really do with your girl? Like, okay, you watch a movie, you talk, like... This is clearly just a guy who's had a bit of a bad relationship experience, and he's just projecting it onto everything. The more I watch Sneeko clips, the more I think that, for him, 
being in the Matrix just means being a bad guy. There's a stream I watched of Sneeko, uh, where he decides to watch this pretty good analysis of Breaking Bad, while giving his own very bad analysis of the show at the same time. In his mind, this show is a great example of why you should actually take the red pill. Working in a job he hates, scrubbing tires and shit like that, he's a wagey. He's in the Matrix, he has no control of his life. The main transition in the show in season one, when Walt shaves his head and decides to start selling meth, he goes, I am awake. I watched Breaking Bad for the first time when I was about 13. Even then, it was pretty obvious to me that this thing is, is a cautionary tale. I used to remember Breaking Bad as this story about a man slowly losing his morals, becoming worse and worse. And on a rewatch, I mean, that's still definitely a thing, but I couldn't help but notice that Walt was a, a bit of a bad guy from the get-go. The dude clearly doesn't have a lot of empathy to a lot of people. I mean, he essentially forced Jesse into working with him. The amount of time that it took him to decide to do what he did in the show was shockingly fast. He barely considered how that would affect his family or like if that would endanger his two kids. When Walter is presented with an out a way to pay his bills while also not, you know, risking the lives of everyone around him, he straight up refuses just because of his ego. Because that's what matters more. Like that's, it's not just about the money, it's about the respect. It's about how you feel, it's about your care. His ego is more important to him than his own life and the lives of his loved ones. You gotta realize that there is some sort of critique here, putting your ego above everything else. That's not seen as like a good choice in the show. Spoiler alert, I guess, if you haven't seen the show, but Walt never really gets to enjoy the money that he's made. He doesn't really get to spend his final days with his family because at the end of it, he has completely alienated himself from all of them. They all hate his guts or, or dead. A bunch of them are dead. Wake up, man. I am awake. Be like Walt. So for Sneeko, is taking the red pill just realizing that you can be a shit? That that's like an option for you? You can be an asshole to the people around you? Is that the, the great realization that he's talking about? Being a total ass? I mean, he clearly believes that he's a guy that's on a mission to better other people's lives, so... I don't think that could really be it. That's what I want to do with the stream. I want to awaken people. Nothing really needs to follow any logic here because it doesn't matter. The only thing that does matter is Sneeko's belief that something in him has changed. The idea, whether it's real or not, that he went through a profound experience is enough. This goddamn pill is anything that you want it to be. And it's clear that whatever that thing is for Sneeko, it is really influenced by his online father figures. I just don't want to catch him in bed with a goblin. The Facts, man. Along the years, Sneeko has acquired quite a lot of online father figures. A lot of e-daddies, if you will. He's got both of the Tate brothers when it comes to learning how to treat women. I don't even need women to make money. Why would I want you making money? For what? I have un- <laughs> Look at how he looks up to, to, to Mr. Tate. Bro just looks like he's waiting for a little pat on the head. A little submissive bit. And when it comes to believing in dumbass theories, he's got Mr. Alex Jones himself. Because he's a truth seeker. He never sold out. Before his channel got nuked to hell, Sneeko had a billion videos praising Alex Jones for being a, a genius. Maybe even doing some fun little imitations of the guy. Frogs are gay! Or Sandy Hook, the global agenda, the global agenda! He's so silly. Ha ha ha. Sneeko idolizes him. He loves him so much. He's his e-father. <laughs> That's why you can often see him repeat his points almost one to one. The government can control the weather if they want to. Now, they're messing with the weather. So many flies over here. Is there like a... A pile of shit next to me. Guys, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna have to move. The only video I managed to salvage from the from the liberal attack on Sneeko's channel is uh is this one. We're looking at some of Jones' most outrageous and unbelievable conspiracies and bizarre rants. In this video, we really get to experience what YouTube's all about. Sneeko is reacting to a Watch Mojo video, reacting to the top ten moments. Uh, where Alex Jones said the dumbest shit possible. And after they mentioned some thing that Jones said in the past that isn't true, uh, Sneeko keeps on pausing the video and saying something along the lines of, Oh, you see? They're trying to silence him. 
they're 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 just taking what he says out of context. They only show the bits where he, where he said things that aren't true. They're out to get him because he's a truth seeker or whatever. But this is what happens when you start speaking the truth. They will adamantly just try to focus on all the bad stuff because instead of getting mad at the system, they get mad at the truth speaker. Can you really call him a truth seeker if they've managed to find that many instances of him lying? This is a top ten video, and they even had a they even had an honorable mentions clip. Truth seeker, my ass. Sometimes our heroes are not as they seem. Sometimes the guy who you think is a truth seeker is actually the opposite. He's just some dude who lies a lot. <laughs> Lying on the internet pays off to an extent. Why do you think I tell everyone that I'm I'm 6'3"? It's because I'm actually 6'5". Why actually go out there and seek terrifying, underlying truths to things when you can just make these things up? Here's the thing, if you want to do like actual investigative work, that's that's a lot of effort. You gotta send reporters that are good and aren't Alex Jones because he's insane. You gotta do some investigative shit. I don't know, go undercover. Put your life on the line. You gotta have a brain that thinks about things in a critical way and doesn't just doesn't just take the most insane <laughs> explanation to things in every situation. These are things that Alex Jones doesn't really like all that much. It's much, much easier, and I guess more interesting for his audience when he makes shit up. His fans are filming out of their mouths, so they, they can't wait to just hear the next earth-shattering, fear-mongering thing that this guy has to say. It's all they want, and Alex, well, he just gives it to them. Nico relentlessly defends Alex Jones throughout the entirety of this Watch Mojo video. It's quite honorable, I'll tell you that much. So he's under so much scrutiny, he's risked his career many times, he's been to court many times, he was just there. You know what they took him to court for? You know, you know what he's been in court for? Lying. He was literally in court for lying. His lying caused a relentless harassment of parents of actual victims. He's a piece of shit. And in that trial, the trial that he went to, for lying, he even got in trouble because because he lied under oath. The guy can't help himself. He loves lying so much. He's like he's like Winnie the Pooh in a in a and a glass of honey. And the honey are are lies. They they play around with us like puppets. You're the one being played with, you submissive little bitch. What happened to being a critical thinker, Sneeko? Does that go out of the window with a guy that could potentially be your dad? By being so madly in love with both of the Tate dudes and Alex Jones and a secret racist guy that we're gonna be talking about in a bit. Sneeko serves as a direct pipeline for all of their ideologies. He takes all these ideas that originally don't really belong to him and manages to re-deliver them to his pretty young audience of, you know, probably like 14-year-olds, 15-year-olds. He manages to make these conspiratorial beliefs, this anti-Semitism, as we're gonna see in a bit, seem cool. And whenever you, you dare, call any of these people crazy. He responds with the most stupidest shit. He's like, oh, you're calling me crazy? What, what, you're, you're trying to silence me? Look, everybody, this guy's trying to silence me for speaking the truth. That's why he's calling me crazy. Shut up. If I say some crazy shit, am I automatically a genius just because someone called me out on it? If I start making a series on YouTube going on about how, how flip-flops are actually just a bunch of little guys and most of the year, they're fine because it's not the summer and nobody steps on them and they're just chilling. But in the summer, it's quite painful for them because everyone's just walking on these little guys. Everyone's just like stepping on these little guys all the time. They can't catch a break. Would I be validated in my rant just because someone decided to point out that I'm talking nonsense? W where's the logic in that? Sneeko follows the Alex Jones textbook very, very closely. Both of them kick things off usually by talking about something that may have actual, like, truth to it. They do that to make themselves seem like people who actually talk sense. And then people make those TikToks where it's like, oh, you know, usually I don't really like Sneeko, but this time, this time he's speaking truth. That's how they managed to catch a pretty big net of people. They lied about the Vietnam War. They lied about the Iraq War. They lied about World War II. Yes, governments do actually lie a lot, but by saying this sentence, He's alluding to much more extreme lies. That the government is lying about flip-flops not being conscious and that they're actually just little guys. Like Alex, Sneeko also uses controversy to make himself bigger because he knows that that just catches attention. Only to eventually, uh, get banned. And I, I guess be forgotten about with the times. So I never expected Trump charging into a goblin's nest to not get some goblin vomit and slopping blood on him. I just don't want to catch him in bed with a goblin. 
the facts man i like the goblin nest analogy so i'm just gonna go ahead and steal it when you're that deep into the goblin's nest when you believe everything that alex jones has to say you're bound to go even deeper alex jones he's there to lure you in he talks about relevant political issues he talks about things that the, the average American citizen cares about. And when you thought that this bizarre, hypothetical goblin situation that you're in couldn't get any worse, he brings you in even further. And that's when you meet the father of all goblins, the worst goblin of them all, this guy. I told Sneeko this, we, we call this race realism. One of the things is that on average, the races have different IQs. And so on average, Asians have the highest IQ and on average, blacks have the lowest IQ. It's like you cannot even say the word Jewish without people getting upset in the same way. And he started talking about Jews. Then he lost his bank account. Then he got kicked out of stadiums because they, they practice basically like black magic. And if you get into um, if Jews, you get into like Jews practice black Nico and Nick Fuentes like each other a lot, which is really interesting because uh, Nick, can you remind us why'd you get banned off of YouTube? So did you get why did you get banned on YouTube? What did you do? Um, oh, well, I got banned for hate speech. I don't know what I said. I mean, I don't <laughs> just some good old lighthearted hate speech. If you don't know who Nick Fuentes is, dude is just an insane Nazi idiot. That That's really all there is to him. I'm not a Nazi. Come on, you know, ish. Come on. You know. Now, what's your opinion on white liberals? I believe that they're our number one enemy. True, yeah, because I would say it's Jews. I wouldn't say it's white liberals. Oh. <laughs> when talking about immigration, uh, women's rights, and LGBTQ plus rights, he said that those societal changes are a bastardized Jewish subversion of the American creed. The founders never intended for America to be a refugee camp for non-white people. Evil. He's evil. The ADL, the Anti-Defamation League, has an entire page just, just dedicated to him, to Fuentes. And they do a very good job at just documenting this man's sheer obsession with Jewish people. He called Matt Walsh, who's another pretty horrible guy, a race trader just because he works for Ben Shapiro who happens to be Jewish and in a debate he said that he doesn't see Jews as Europeans and he doesn't see Jews as part of Western civilization. Next big frontier for populist and conservative is discussing Jewish power. This is a man who clearly hates Jewish people. I mean the idea of Jewish people having any sort of power or control in any sort of way makes him sick that much is clear now when sneeko decided to platform this guy on his channel he didn't do so to challenge his views to i don't know debate him or whatever these people like to do no he did it to just kind of hear him out yeah he wanted to hear out the nazi why would you want to do that i said I, that happened to me on stream i said i said 11 9 might have been fraudulent and they terminated my stream live oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right it's because he's one of the few people who would actually enable his crazy ass ideas. It's very obvious from the get go how Sneeko's conspiracy obsession has has created a direct path to this man, to this awful, awful guy. And I don't understand how that doesn't wake people up. The fact that like misinformation can like why can they decide what information is good and bad? Or why? Do we let these corporations decide what hate speech is? He's fully created an alternative image of the world, where he's a guy who's just out there speaking the truth consistently, and everyone is out to get him just for that. And while everyone is out to get him, Fuentes is one of the few who are actually willing to sit there and listen to him, to take him in and to his side. And as her fun little chat goes, uh, Fuentes does his best to push his agenda all the time. And uh, yeah, so I think it's not even political, it's just like, are you with like the globalists? Are you with Slavery Incorporated? Or are you like a real human being? Oh, oh, globalists? Oh man, I, I wonder what that word means. I'm a dumb idiot. I wonder what, what he means by globalist. Theorists uh, throw this word around a lot. And you know, globalist is an actual word. It has its meaning. You can, I don't know, look it up on, on Google. In the case of Fuentes, he is talking about a secret group that controls people behind the scenes a very international group with roots in a lot of countries. He's he's talking about Jewish people. I mean, it's it's kind of obvious. This is textbook anti-Semitism. This is like really old school stuff. The evil Austrian uh, mustached man himself, he's often portrayed Jews as international elements who conduct their business everywhere, posing a threat to all people who are bounded to their soil, to the fatherland. This is exactly one-to-one -one, the kind of rhetoric that Fuentes is alluding to here. And Sneeko and his fans are eating 
making this shit up. It's disgusting. Anti-Semitic trope. And it's like, well, it's true. I mean, it's obviously true that Jews have connections everywhere and finance Hollywood. I'm usually used to seeing Sneeko in this situation where he's like, you know, combating someone, arguing with someone, doing a bit of a debate. But these two, they're like two little lovebirds. I feel like if I leave these two alone for too long, they're, they're gonna be making out. It doesn't matter what one of these guys says. It doesn't matter how contradictory it is to, to, to the other one's point of view. They're always going to agree with each other. There's a section in this where they're both being like insanely, insanely misogynistic, which is where Sneeko really shines. This is this is his bread and butter right there. And uh, newsflash, no guy wants to date a fucking girl boss, okay? No, no guy. No guy. But while they're both misogynistic pieces of shit, they're both coming at this uh, from pretty different perspectives. Fuentes is a big Christian guy. And the thing is, you're totally right about the spiritual battle. It's good versus evil. Meaning his misogyny is more of the type that you'd see in like a husband from the 40s, you know, that kind of old school. But Sneeko is more of just like an Andrew Tate copycat. He just wants to live a very pornographic lifestyle. Something that completely opposes Nick's very Christian worldview. And while both of them are two people that have made careers out of arguing with people, guess what? That conflict is never brought up. They're trying to steal the souls of people with yeah. pornography, with gambling. Yes. Look at Twitch. Yes. Like Their ideologies are like water. They spill out and they fill whatever they need to fill. It doesn't matter. They're gonna just say whatever they need to say to keep the grift going, to seem like they're on the same side. Nico and Mitty Adolf here are talking about Andrew Tate or whatever, when seemingly out of nowhere, uh, Sneeko pops this question. Technology's too hot. Yeah. So, I mean, that's why. What do you think about the Jews? Yeah, I mean, that's one hell of a conversation starter right there. I'm sure this was a pretty hot topic around the dinner table around the 30s. Let's see how Nick responds, hey? I think it's totally legit. I mean, I've gotten canceled for saying this. Well, but, I, I don't um, know what you mean by totally legit. Like, I've been- Look at how excited he is. What do I think about the Jews? <laughs> Let me tell you. I think it's totally legit. I mean, I've gotten- The sheer speed in which Fuentes reacted to just- Just the, the sound of the word Jews is insane. Jokes aside though, what is about to happen here is- is really dangerous. It's really unsettling. As a person who grew up in a Jewish household, even a non-religious one, the, the things that Nick is gonna be talking about is- it's, it's the sort of thing that you're warned about your entire life. And to see those things being spewed on such a public platform is... I mean, it's kind of terrifying, honestly. Sneeko brings up the Jews. He brings up his recent conspiracy obsession. Getting deeper into the conspiracy things and people... Like we saw, Nick is ready. He jumps on this opportunity immediately. Do they control all the money in the world. Are they behind the scenes on most of these issues? You know, I, I'm a guy that I talk about that a lot on my show, and that's a big part of why I've been, like, canceled. Jews are very organized. That's what you have to understand on some level, is that you have things like the Republican Jewish Congress, the World Jewish Congress, you've got Jewish federations all across the country. What he's doing here is essentially building up this sort of view of things. By presenting selective facts, he's creating his own reality. He intentionally mentions every single Jewish organization that he can come up up with enforce the idea that this conspiracy is real. Jews are getting together behind the scenes and they're controlling us. In another stream with Sneeko, he goes on about how Jews practice in black magic. It, it is a bad thing. It is a bad thing because they they practice basically like black magic. And if you get into um, if Jews, you get into like Jews practice black magic, they're all about that and they practice sacrifices. And this has been written about for thousands of years, but Wait, they so cover you're it up. Kabbalah and like those traditions are kind of what like Epstein and them were doing at the island. Oh yeah, what one hundred percent? Nick's goal is to alienate the Jewish person. Oh, it's this weird thing that does black magic. He wants Jewish people to seem as this organized threat. I grew up with my great grandma around for most of my life. She she was a Holocaust survivor. I can remember her talking about life in Czechoslovakia before her and her family went through you know one of the worst things that that you can just possibly imagine. The conspiracies people threw at her at her school when she was younger. Insults and rhetorics that are essentially the same things that Nick is talking about right now. He's just masking it better. He smiles and tries to seem polite, but it's the exact same shit. They're tyrants, you know, they're trying to impose their way of life, but um, and I gotta ask myself, I mean, have we reached a point where all that stuff is totally forgotten about? There are still survivors living to this day. I mean, my great-grandma just passed away like three years ago. Now, not even a century later, 
we see this shit popping out everywhere. And it's ridiculous. I mean, Sneeko is a guy who constantly obsesses over wealth. He sees Kanye West and sees how much money he has. That's an inspiration to him. Elon Musk is an inspiration to him. Andrew Tate, inspiration. Cheerily, just because of the amount of money that they have. But when it comes to Jewish people, it's not an inspiration anymore. It's a, it's a source of fear. Do they control all the money in the world? Are they behind the scenes on most of these issues? And this shit doesn't end with them. I mean, the fact that Kanye West is going on his on his anti-Jew tour right now. News network platforming him for an interview every single day. Do you not think that this is going to affect and influence more people? What, what, what do you think is going to happen? It really does feel like we're headed in a really dangerous direction. And it just, I don't know, it pisses me off. You can look at a guy like Sneeko, look at him saying all this crazy shit, and brush it off. I know that I have. You see the stuff that he's saying, and you're like, oh, he's an idiot. But this idiot has people listening to him. Kanye West has a lot of people listening to him. W where is this headed? I feel like if we keep letting this shit slide too much, things are gonna get even worse. Damn We're supposed from... to just accept that the Jews are tyrants who want to change our way of life? They are, I mean, they are. That's just true. They have ultimate control and power and they will abuse it if they need to protect their, their agenda. Really interesting. Kanye is going down the same pipeline that me and Fuentes are going down, talking about bots and red pill and about who owns the banks and about who controls the media. Words have consequences. And when you have a huge platform like Kanye, that he can fuel the hate so easily. Over the weekend, we saw the banner that said Kanye was right about the Jews and then the propaganda pamphlets on people's front lawns and, and people started becoming afraid of what's happening.